What's going on everyone, Jack here from Half Chrome, and this is the Esheen and Atom RC Awk. That's right, it's a collaboration between those two companies, and they built this really sleek looking FPV drone, and they've included some pretty high quality components to come with it. The remote is the Esheen or Radio Master T8 Lite, which is pretty darn solid, I'll tell you more about this. And these are the Skyzone Cobra Lights. These are by far the best goggles I've seen in a kit to date. Stay tuned, we'll talk more about this kit and find out if it's for you. All right, so first let's talk about the AUK itself. I don't get the name, uh, but this drone here was really built by Adam RC and just kind of co-branded with Esheen has some really nice components, and I think the look itself is pretty sleek. I mean, look at that low profile body, pretty solid. It's 196 millimeter wheelbase from motor post to motor post, and I found this thing weighing in just over 200 grams. So when you put a battery on it, it's gonna be over 250 grams, and they do include at least one battery. This is an Esheen 450 4S battery. Well, I'm a big fan of these motors. They're 2004, 2700 kV motors, and they're pushing four inch props. That means this thing has plenty of torque, plenty of power, so you can fly this thing and do some freestyle and acro and all sorts of good stuff. But you'll notice here on the battery strip, they 3D printed a mount for a GPS unit. So yes, you can put this thing into GPS rescue, and it does work. I tried it a handful of times where you flip the switch, it'll raise up and it'll start coming back to you. Now it's not going to land like a DJI drone, but it is nice to have that feature, especially if you're a beginner and you're learning how to fly and you get disoriented, you're not sure exactly where it is, you flip that switch and it'll start coming back to you. Now it is an F4 flight controller and it does have a USB-C uh, port here on the side. So just kind of keep that in mind. The ESC is an all-in-one 35 amp ESC with a burst up to 50 amps. The FPV cam here is the Foxeer Razer uh, 1200 TVL camera as a pretty solid image. The receiver on the inside is a standard receiver, Radio Master diversity antenna, and it of course connects to the Radio Master remote. Now, you can also connect it uh, to FR Sky remotes or jumpers, anything else that has the DAT16 protocol. Now, the weak point here is the video transmitter. In my opinion, um, mine just didn't work really well. <laughs> there are some reasons that I'll get into in a second that I think might be the case, but um, it does do up to 500 milliwatts. Now, I did crash this thing. I crashed this thing actually at my very first flight. Um, <laughs> uh, what, what was happening, I was just kind of cruising around I'm like, oh, well, I'll let's do some acro. And I did a front flip and uh, the rates weren't what I thought they were. I didn't check them, right? That's on me. And uh, just kind of was rolling slower than I thought. I didn't recover in time, boom, crash. And then ever since then, the VTX wasn't quite as good. But I do think the antenna placement in the back, but I'm not a big fan of the antenna placement in the back, mostly because um, my wires here were kind of crossing over uh, with the receiver and the VTX, and that's just never good policy to be crossing and stuff like that. Um, it just kind of creates some noise in the signal, uh, so you might want to check that. Now, in order to do so, you kind of have to take these covers off the side. Now, I do like these side covers. I think they're, well, they're pretty sleek looking, um, and they do protect the electronics, so that is definitely a bonus. All right, so I'm going to start by saying I think FPV all-in-one kits have really come a long way. This drone and the components that come with it are some of the best that I've seen in all-in-one kits. And it's nice that, that the hobby is getting easier for people to get into. That said, there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done. You know, at $425, this is still pretty expensive. And the components, while I do like them, they're not top notch. So you gotta keep that in mind. There, there still can be some improvements, but I do like, you know, the goggles, for instance, they're pretty solid. The remote, it's pretty good. I, I you know, I would have preferred the pro version, but it's nice. Um, the thing that I don't like, and if you look at the, the FPV feed, you'll see a lot of flicker. Now, could that be because I crashed? Uh, yeah, that, that might have something to do with it, but I went back and watched my first flight, and I still had quite a bit of that, you know, that flicker coming through the goggles. Now, it's not a huge deal, and if you're an analog flyer, you, you just kind of get used to it. Um, there are some things I could do to probably make it a little bit better. I could reroute some of the antennas and things like that, and it probably would get a little bit better. Now, I didn't do that because I think this is built for a beginner, right? You, if you're going to buy a kit, 
that, you know, you're kind of making the assumption that you're new to the hobby. So you probably don't want to have to okay. do a lot of tinkering. And I think this flight here with my son illustrates that. If you watch, yeah, he flew right into the tree. Um, and if you look at the video feed here, you're going to see why, right? He, he takes off and then he doesn't see anything until he's in the actual tree. So, you know, that with that in mind, should you consider uh, going digital? Uh, you know, digital is so expensive, so you kind of have to take that in mind. But the video feed is going to be pretty darn clear. All right, let's talk some more about the AUK. I do really like the design. It reminds me a lot of this Uvify, uh, this tank, this beast of a drone where you kind of have uh, those plastic enclosures covering the electronics. But this thing is a flying brick and this thing's 200 grams. I'll take this thing any day. So let's talk about the components and that's kind of where I think this thing shines. Uh, I do really like the Radiomaster T8 Lite. It is not as nice as the T8 Pro. Uh, the gimbals are just standard potentiometers. Uh, we do have plenty of switches. As an internal battery, super light actually, charges via USB-C. We've got another port here to connect for Buddy Box. If anybody does that still, I don't know. Um, but overall, a nice remote. And yes, you can use this with other drones if they have the D8 or D16 protocol. Plus, if you're a beginner and you're thinking about getting this kit, yes, you can use this to plug in and fly it on a sim. And that is something you absolutely should be doing if you're learning to fly FPV. And this is a good remote for that. I do think it's a nice upgrade to most remotes out there uh, that come with kits. So solid option here. Let's talk about these goggles. These are the Skyzone Cobra lights and they're pretty solid. Actually, I do really like these. I did fly with these goggles as well as my own just to kind of go back and forth. Now, generally I'm flying with these, these OLED screens, low profile. And I still did think these were pretty solid. The picture is pretty good. They're comfortable. They have a DVR, they have diversity. Uh, the scroll wheels on the top are really easy to use. Buttons uh, are marked and laid out. It's really nice. Um, 18650 battery on the bottom, charges via USB-C. And you put your micro SD card in the slot right here. Now with any box goggle, the field of view is just really immersive and wide. And that's kind of nice actually. I found the picture to be pretty darn crisp as well. Now it's 4.3 inch screen, 480 by 272. You get about an hour and a half battery before this thing dies on you. I do really like the four inch idea when you're getting into drones and they're really two pretty solid options. Interestingly enough, both by Ishin. This is the Ishin Novice 4 and this is the Auk. Uh, and you kind of have to decide. They're two different really kind of ideas. This one is really built more if you want to get into and do some freestyle, but this guy is really built more for long range. Now you can kind of cruise with this. Um, they say you get up to nine minutes of flight time. I wasn't getting that. I was getting uh, more like five and six. But again, that all depends on how you fly. But the all-in-one kits are actually getting pretty darn good. And it's nice you have some different options. Now, this guy being a little bit heavier, a little bit more powerful, if you're really kind of nervous about it, maybe isn't your best option. But if you've flown a little bit, you've done some time in the sim, and you really want, I don't know, like a real FPV freestyle quad, this is actually a really nice place to start. Now I did rig up a mount for my Insta360 Go and I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't include um, at least some mounting hardware to mount a small camera. Either this, the SMO, Naked GoPro something, they should have included that, I would have liked that. Um, for $425, I think they could include some extra TPU 3, 3D printed parts. But when I put this on here, it just, I, again, I got more interference coming out of my VTX. I don't think that should be the case. Again, I think that, you know, there's just some wires that got crossed up here uh, when they mounted the receiver and the VTX and things like that. Just could have been done a little bit cleaner. Now, it's hard to get at that stuff because you have to take off all these screws to remove these side plates so then you can take it apart. So it does require a little bit more effort if you have to repair this thing, which I obviously do. Now, this crash actually wasn't me this crash where this part broke wasn't me i was my son and i thought you know if this is built for beginners let's get a beginner and get him out there and see what he thinks about flying this thing and he actually said he really liked it except for of course the crash overall i do really like this drone i think the design is super slick uh, the motors are good good performance again my big issue was the vtx but again that's partially on how i think this was built plus i crashed this thing 
a whole lot and until the last one where my son put it into a tree like into a tree and then stuck in the tree about 25 30 feet up uh, did not uh, it, it held up to the crashes but we've gone through uh, well two sets of props and I don't have any extra four inch props laying around so I'm gonna have to do that pick some of those up I hope this was helpful if it wasn't um, let us know right leave us a comment down below what do you think what do you think about this drone do you think this is good for uh, a beginner or maybe a uh, an intermediate pilot that's really kind of looking to take that next step into FPV I think it is I like the components um, I think you can kind of roll with them I would have preferred the the T8 Pro uh, remote controller but again I know that's gonna add some cost Anyway, make sure you check us out on halfchrome.com and we do give away a drone at least once a month to a Patreon and we do that on our live streams, which are Sunday nights, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Hey, good luck everyone and happy flying.